Okay, what we're about to do is learn our first technique for integration. Our first trick. And because what we're trying to do is we're trying to develop a bag of tricks in, that, will, that will aid us in finding antiderivatives. And finding antiderivatives is a little bit different than finding derivatives. Derivatives, we, in finding those, we have a set of rules and we follow those rules correctly and we end up with the derivative. With integration, it's a little bit more of an art form. So we're going to learn our first method, our first trick to finding antiderivatives. And it's called the substitution method. But before we do that, I want to say a little bit about differentials. Let's suppose that we have a curve here, this blue curve, and then we have a tangent right here. Here's the tangent, and it's got a point of tangency right there. Okay, so there's our point of tangency. Now, I want to find the slope of that tangent line. Now, remember, the slope of that tangent line is the derivative at that point. So let's look at it this way. We've got the change in x here. I just, I just go over from this point a little ways and I'm going to call that dx. And then I, I go up some right here, the corresponding amount. I make a right turn here and go up until I hit the tangent and I've got the change in y. Now remember the slope of that tangent, the, the slope which we learned in Algebra 1 was the change in y over the change in x which is exactly what this is. Okay, the change in y over the change in x. <laughs> and, of course, that equals the derivative. Now, it follows then that we could multiply both sides by dx. Okay, and we get this. dy equals f prime of x dx. Now, this is what I'm calling differential form. And here, here's the thing. We, we've been using this Leibniz notation before, dy dx, and we've been told, okay, this is not a fraction, it's notation. But the thing is, you notice if we look at the derivative this way, it kind of behaves like a fraction. And, and what we do is we, we use what we call infinitesimals. We say, okay, let's suppose this dx is infinitesimally small, and this dy is infinitesimally small. That's what we're assuming here. It's sort of a different way of looking at it because we've looked at the limit of the difference quotient. Now we're looking at this thing of saying, okay, I'm going to write the differential of y, dy, equals f prime of x times the differential of x. And this is differential form. Now, this is primarily the form we use to get to the integral notation. Because think about this, if we have dy equals f prime of x dx, and I put an integral around both sides. Now look, this is integration of 1, think of a 1 in here, with respect to y. See? Well, what do you integrate to get 1? I mean, what do you differentiate to get 1 with respect to y? Well, y. The derivative of y with respect to y is 1. So I can replace this side over here with just y, okay? And then this side over here, I'm saying, well, what do I differentiate to get f prime of x? <laughs> well, I differentiate f to get f prime, right? So there we have it. So what we have now is we have y equals f of x plus c. And so you can see when we do this integration, we're, we're using the differential form. Now, let's look at substitution. Let's suppose that we have a composite function. And remember, to differentiate a composite function, you take the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So if you put this in differential form, dy equals the derivative of this dx, notice the derivative of f of g of x is f prime of g of x times g prime of x dx, right? This is the dis differential form. Except, you know, this, this part right here is a little more complicated. Okay? Now, let's look at this. If, if I then integrate both sides, if I put an integral ar around both sides, of course, this left side is y, and here's the y. Here's the uh, 
the right hand side right over here now this is kind of a mess and we want to clean up that mess in other words I don't like the fact that I've got a g of x here and then a g prime of x dx here. I would rather just have f prime of x dx. Well, I can't use x, but here's what I can do. I can bring in another variable. And I can just say, well, let this variable u equal g of x. Now, I take that and put it in differential form and have du equals g prime of x dx. See that? Now, take a minute and just and just dig what what's what we have here. See this g prime of x dx right there? And I have it right here. Well, du is equal to g prime of x dx. So, I think I should be able to take g prime of x dx and just replace that with a du. And see this g of x? I'll just replace that with a u. So, let's see what we have. We have this messy looking thing can be replaced with this. And now we have something that's a little bit tamer looking. Okay, now let's look at an example. Here, well, let me let me do this. Just so you'll see where everything came from. Okay? You can see where everything came from. Okay? So let's look at an example. Let's suppose that we've got this and we want to find the antiderivative. Now, this, here's the thing. We would be happy if this were just x to the seventh because we could just use the power rule for integration, but it's not that. It's got this mess in it, x squared plus 5 to the seventh. We don't like that. So here's what we do. I'm going to replace this x squared plus 5 with u, and then I uh, take the derivative right so I take the derivative of this in differential form see so I have du equals 2x dx it's just like we had dy equals f prime of x dx it's just like that except now instead of y and x we have u and x see here's the derivative 2x now if we making doing that notice what we have here in place of this 2x dx, 2x dx, I can just replace all that with du. And in place of this x squared plus 5, I can replace that with u. So this whole thing up here, this whole thing right here, I can just write this way. See? I made that substitution. And then I can replace the 2x dx. Now, here's the trick with this substitution. Notice I let u be something with the idea in, in mind that when I take the derivative of that, that derivative will be the rest of what's in this integral. See? So I let u be x squared plus 5, and then du is 2x dx. So I let u be this, and then du was the rest of it. And that way, I can turn this mess right here into this lovely integral, right? And then I can just integrate, use the power rule for integration. And if we want to, we can substitute back in, because remember u is x squared plus 5, I can just substitute back in and get 1 eighth x squared plus 5 to the eighth plus c. And there you have it. There's an example of the substitution method.